This is now part two of the video to really understand how we can construct our operator to measure spin in a general direction. So we need to take the inner product of this matrix of spin vectors with our generalized direction vector. And so we need to have our spin um, matrices in each direction. And so then effectively, this is going to go in here, right? As we take our dot product, this is in the x direction, this is in the x direction. This will go in multiplied by here, this will go in multiplied by there. So one thing that's a little bit helpful, this will take up too much space if I did it all out. So I'm actually going to write it out just all together as a matrix. So one thing to notice is that each of these terms is going to have an h bar over 2, so that's going to come out up front. So now, I want to first consider this term, upper left term. If you notice, this has a 0 here, so nothing here will contribute. This has a 0 here, so nothing here will contribute. This has a 1, so what goes in this upper corner is 1 times cosine theta. Now, let's move to this term. Notice that here I have a 1, and so I have a sine theta cosine phi. Sine theta cosine phi. And then here I have negative i. So minus i sine theta sine phi. And then here has a 0, so nothing contributes. OK, now we go down to this corner. I have a 1 again. So I have sine theta cos phi. And then here I have an i, so positive i, and then sine theta, sine phi. And then here I have a 0, so this doesn't contribute. Now we do this final corner. 0, nothing contributes. 0, nothing contributes. Negative 1, so I have negative cosine of theta. So now this is my general spin in a general direction, which we would define in terms of theta and phi. So again, if you wanted to, you could do a quick check and plug in specific values of theta and phi that would give you back x, y, and z. And you should make sure that this actually gives you back these matrices. So this is the most generalized form, and these are specific forms for very specific choices of theta and phi. Now, there is actually one more thing we can do here. We can do some clever simplification, and this is where it helps to really get comfortable with some of our trig identities, and especially in terms of our complex numbers. Notice that this has sine theta, sine theta, sine theta, sine theta. So if we imagine pulling this out, this is the same thing as sine theta cosine of phi plus i sine phi. Okay, how's that helpful? This is the definition of e to the i phi. And if we come up here, we again say, okay, I have sine theta, and now I have cosine phi minus i sine phi. So that's not the same thing. There's again a helpful thing we can do here which is to recognize, and this is where you just kind of have to know some of these things or to know that there's probably something to know to simplify this. Cosine of negative phi is the same as cosine of phi. Sine of negative phi is the same as negative sine of phi. So what this means is that this is actually the same as sine theta e to the negative i phi. So that is a different way of just expressing these elements. But what's nice about doing that is then you see clearly you have cosine theta, sine theta, sine theta, negative cosine theta. And then on these corners, you have e to the i, e to the negative i phi, and e to the i phi. And then it's much more clear what the symmetry is from this matrix. And you can ask a question such as, is it Hermitian or not? It's a little messier to see that in this form. So that is one nice way of simplifying it, and we now have then a nice general form of the spin in any direction where we're defining that direction in these spherical coordinates of this theta and phi.